Hey guys, my name is Robbe and I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast and I will be the new host of the Little Bits series. Now let's get into the video. In our last video, we discussed cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, their common uses and some real-life examples of these attacks. Links to our other videos can be found in the description down below. Now in this video, we'll discuss SQL injections, what they are, what they can do and some real-life implications of them. SQL injections. SQL stands for Standard Query Language also called SQL. And this language is used for storing, manipulating and retrieving data in and from databases. It does this by constructing queries that retrieve information only in cases where the result of the query is true. Now SQL queries are used in cases where the database uses a horizontal structure, like a login page. The user injects the username and the passwords and only if they are true, the user then gains access. This makes SQL injections one of the more common vulnerabilities to be found online, especially in applications written in PHP and ASP using older interfaces. An SQL injection can allow its hackers to modify SQL queries made to a database, thus compromising the process and allowing its hackers to retrieve or inject certain queries in the database. This attack can be used to read and modify sensitive data, execute admin operations, recover file content, and in some cases, even issue commands to the underlying operating system. The potential risk of an SQL injection attack depends on the attacker's skill, as well as the defense countermeasures of the targeted attack. Let's have a look at an example of an SQL injection that will allow an attacker to bypass a website's authentication. If a website only allows authenticated users to see certain files, an attacker can execute an SQL injection to bypass that authentication. The original code that is supposed to prevent unauthenticated users could look something like this. The executed query needed for authentication could look something like this. Select everything from users where the owner is or username and the item name is file1. This query makes sure that only a user with an authenticated username can access a specific file. Because the base query and the user input are connected in this query, it behaves correctly only if the item name does not contain a single quote character. This allows an attacker to exploit this query and cause an SQL injection. All an attacker needs to do is to have a valid username and then enter the string name quote or quote a quote equals quote a in the item name bracket. The resulting query would look like this. We select everything from items where the owner equals attacker and the item name equals the item that we want to get or A equals A. This addition of the or A equals A condition causes the WHERE clause to always evaluate to true, thus allowing the attacker to bypass the authentication and view the restricted file. This shows how easy an SQL injection that is inserted as a user's input could allow attackers to gain access to a database without being authenticated. That's it for today's video. In our next video, we'll have a look at a real-life example on an SQL injection. In the meantime, you can find additional materials in the description down below. Thank you for tuning in and see you in the next video.